fall fishing in the Northeast. It's like a living puzzle. You're constantly changing from day to day. You're starting to get that cold front coming in. The leaves are changing, everything's changing, and you have to adapt and change with it. And I think because of that, it just makes you a better angler. There we go. Hey guys, Alex Weatherell, Elite Series Bassmaster Pro, out here on one of my home bodies of water in Connecticut, Lake Lilanoa. It's cold, it's October. We're gonna go figure out how to find some bass in this cold fall weather, mid to late October. Water's about 60 degrees. We're gonna go catch some fish. We're gonna start off uh, doing some forward facing sonar type stuff this morning, just kind of out over suspended water, over some deeper structure, little Titan jig head, Lunker City finesse fish, uh, 10 pound test uh, leader to eight pound test braid, Shimano X Pride rod, Vanford spinning reel, and I'm just looking open water fish, looking for some bait fish, a lot of uh, perch, a lot of um, little bait fish in here, so. That's where the big smallmouth are this time of year. That's what we're gonna try to do first and we'll kind of go from there. So that's like right there, that's like two bass. It's just crazy because you can be, they can be right below you, they can be all over the place. Yeah, so like right now, I mean, this is like a great shot. You can see there's like, there's a drop off and there's actually a little rock wall that kind of goes right next to the drop off. So I'm just kind of looking around where that uh, wall is to see if there's any fish on it. And these things, these things move way, way more than you would ever think. So, and you know, one part of the day they're on one piece of the wall and next, you know, like an hour later, they're kind of moved completely off of it, kind of wherever the bait is. So right now I'm just kind of looking around until we find a group of them. Funny, so like before this whole live scope thing, like you'd have, uh, before like the forward facing sonar, you would end up having, so in, in the fall, like you'd see a, so many of these fish, uh, like just blowing up in the middle of the water, just kind of out over nothing and you, you don't really know how to target them. And now that you got forward facing sonar, kind of has made a lot of those fish catchable now. Whereas before, like, there was no real way of targeting or seeing them. What's nice about this stuff is you can see how the fish reacts to your bait. So I start off kind of just shimmying it through the water column, and we kind of do the same thing for those winter stripers. Um, and you're kind of just, you're not, you're, you're swimming the bait, but you're kind of just giving it a little bit of action. And you kind of just want to reel it in a straight line, but so I'm reeling it, I'm keeping the handle turning constantly at a slow pace and I'm just kind of working the tip just to give it a little bit of action as it goes through the water column. And then when the fish, when it gets close to the fish, I kind of see how they react to it and adjust my retrieve from there. But this morning so far, they're pretty uh, lethargic. I mean, some of these, some of these can be carp. There's a lot of carp in here. And you'll kind of know if they're carp or not just because they don't react at all. They just completely ignore it. You know, like bass will usually at least look at it, but they may decide that they don't want to eat as well, but they'll at least like, they'll at least acknowledge its presence. But carp will just completely ignore it, so. But it's nice, like I'm using these two new X-Pride rods that I literally just got, and they've got these solid tips in them. So it's kind of nice, because like the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to just pull it through the water column too fast. So you just want to keep it going slow and try to impart a bunch of action into it as you do it. And uh, 
What's kind of nice is, ooh, there's a good one. That's a good one. Um, these rods have this solid tip that lets you, oh my gosh, going right to it. Drop, drop, drop. See if this one will come over to it. Oh my gosh, dude. I'll give that one more try. Just looked at it. Oh, I'm almost on top of them. I'm gonna drop it straight down. Going right down to him, right down to him. I'm gonna drop it right above his head. Oh my gosh, come on, dude. You gotta eat this thing. Man, he just not even acknowledging that it's there. That might be a carp. So I'm just casting the swim bait out in three sounds head, letting it hit bottom and slow rolling it back to the boat. And I'm kind of, I've got that rock wall. You can see like on live, I've got that rock wall like all the way ahead of me. So I'm literally just casting on the wall in my entire cast, I'm bringing it back on the wall. So I'm parallel with it. I think that's probably one of the biggest things that I learned with this forward facing sonar is how much these fish move just from day to day. And that's why you can have a great practice for a tournament or one day you catch him, you know. There we go. Oh gosh. <laughs> like I said, dude, that swim bait just catches him here. Oh God. I lost oh, it, I lost uh, Dropping fish like that. I'm gonna use 360 and live. Because the 360, I can see the structure a lot better. Some guys only run forward facing sonar, but personally, I like having, uh, I like having 360. So you can see like, big drop off because it's dark so you can tell it just drops right off there and then we're actually running I'm right on top of right next to a rock wall so now I'm just I'm throwing we just we just turned the boat a little bit but the rock wall and the drop off both go this way so I'm just using my 360 I can literally point it with my rod and pinpoint cast that wall and then we're just gonna swim that thing right along it and that's how we're getting a lot of the bites and you can see on live it drops off right on the outside of it. So it's just a really nice spot that has a bunch of different things all happening at once. Of course, we'll make sure we get the little one in the boat. <laughs> all right, first, first official fish in the boat, second fish hooked. A little small mouth. And I'm just, like I said, just letting this thing hit the bottom, make sure I'm on the bottom, slow rolling it, and trying to line myself up with the structure to keep this thing next to the structure as long as possible. So I'm trying to be parallel with it, keep everything straight ahead of me as much as I can. And that's why that's why I kind of like a three a sounds head. I just feel like anytime you're fishing like 10 to 20 feet of water, a three a sounds head helps you just keep it near the bottom, but you can keep it moving at the same time. It's like a happy medium. Half ounce drops a little too fast. You start to lose some of the action. Quarter ounce, it starts to lift up on you. So you're a lot higher in the water column than you think you are. Three a sounds just seems to be a perfect medium so majority of the time if I'm throwing a swim bait in the northeast oh, I'm throwing three of sounds yeah he smoked it
All right, so we're going after a little bit of a big jig bite. So I got like a three quarter ounce football jig. I got a four ounce Slunker City Karate Crawl trailer on the back, bunch of kick. I'm throwing this on 40 pound test with 16 uh, pound uh, fluorocarbon, Mastiff fluorocarbon. And I think this is a 7.3 medium heavy Poison Adrena uh, bait casting rod on a Bantam and just nice big medium heavy setup three quarter ounce heavy jig and we're just going to knock this thing just on some of these big bluffs and uh this time of year you can get a big large mouth doing that so see if we can make it happen One. All right, so we're gonna roll back up on this hump. They're actually moving water a little bit now. And when they do, these fish get a little active. So just gonna take this little finesse swim bait, this little uh, 3 8 ounce jig head, and we're gonna re-hit the same stuff we did earlier this morning, but now with the water moving, I think we're gonna be able to try to get a couple bites out of this. Falling it right into the boat, right below me right now. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. He came up and grabbed it. He's coming over to it. Come on. And swims away. Now, that's why. That's why he didn't like it. Let it hit bottom and just slow roll it in. There he is. <laughs> Little finesse swim bait bite. Right where he was supposed to be, right on that rock wall. Just slow roll that baby in. That's a big one. Gosh. My gosh. <laughs> Sick. Oh, dude, I love this finesse swim bait bite. I mean, come on. That's as good as it gets. All right, nice fall smallmouth on Lake Lilanoa. Just using little finesse swim bait, four inch Slunker City swim fish. 3 8 ounce Titan jig head on uh, X Pride medium heavy spinning rod. Just when they're eating bait fish offshore, it's just an awesome way to catch big smallmouth. Two for two calling shots today. Cool. Love it. Cool. Nice job. <laughs> Something interesting I have found and learned over time is that, so on sunny days, the smallmouth like to be on the structure because the you get that shade and it casts a shadow, but on cloudy days, they will still be there, but they'll be suspended and they'll be spread out all around that structure. So on a cloudy day, you could be fishing it and you're not getting any bites. And I've had that happen <clears throat> one day sunny, one day's cloudy. <clears throat> And then on day two, you really just have to kind of fish around it. 
because if you just go up and fish it, you don't get bit and you leave, those fish are still there. They just, without the sun, it doesn't position them on that structure. And a well, little bit of info like that can go a long ways. That's taken me some time to finally get that through my head. So you got, you got about half a dozen brush piles right here. You can see boom, 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 boom. And then this entire group of fish are just crappy. And you can start to see them on the 360 now. Brush pile, brush pile. All these little bushy looking things. And there's just a ton of crappy that sit on them in the fall. So you wanna catch big crappy, Lake Lolano is the place to do it. What is this? Largemouth. <laughs> Remember I was telling you there's largemouth mixed into these brush piles? Well, here they are. That's a pretty decent one too. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's funny. So we are now back on the main lake. We're right in the middle of the lake, fishing some deep bluff shorelines, drops. We're in 32 feet of water and we're about 10 feet away from shore. So we're just looking for some of those big largemouth that are sitting on some of these deep bluff rock with a big three quarter ounce football jig. Don't go into the boat, don't go into the boat. No. Crap. That fish is cruising. That was cool. That was cool. Gosh, it's a school of smallmouth. <laughs> That's what I was seeing was a school of smallmouth. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right, well, there's a school of about a half a dozen of them right over there. So that's pretty cool. So. I was actually, we're gonna go fish some bluff stuff over here. And as I was coming up, I see on live, I see one or two fish and I, I look over and sure enough, there's like half a dozen of these smallmouth, and they actually go right underneath the boat, circle around and come back to the hard piece. And so I just casted right over to them with the mega live and caught that one. And there's a couple more down there. Sweet. There's my bait. There's the fish. Oh, is he looking? To, oh, look, he's just swimming away from it. There's my bait. Yep. There's the fish. Ooh. Crazy, man. They just, that one didn't want it. He's going, it's going down, going down. Stopped it right above his head. Drop it down. So he's looking at it. That big thing's looking at it. He's swimming over to it, swimming over. But he just like, just doesn't want to get it. Now I'm fishing the jig on some of these steeper stuff. 
but at the same time I'm kind of doing two and one. I'm scanning around and just looking to see if I see any fish out here a little ways, either even with the boat or suspended out in deeper water. And if I do see them, I can always cast to them. Like actually, there's one right there. Let's see if I can't pitch to this fish right here. Coming out for it. Coming out for it, looking at it. Looking at it. Got him. <laughs> that was pretty sick. And that's my exact point is I'm I'm out here. I'm out here throwing a jig for largemouth, but with this Mega Live, I can just look around and find a bunch of other fish at the same time. That was cool. Hey, how you doing? Another little one on the swim bait. Came back to the same area and caught another one. There was a fish or two actually out here that had my eye. Caught my attention while that fish ate it. All right, well that's the day. Large mouth, small mouth, crappy. No big fish on the big jig though. I was really hoping we'd do that, but I was happy with with the conditions, the cold front, the bluebird skies, I was pretty happy with what we did, what we figured out, the pattern that we were able to put together, figure out the fish were on the bottom, fish were on that deeper shorelines. Even the smallmouth that I thought would be out in open water ended up being on some of those bluffy stuff where you catch the largemouth. And that's what was cool. You know, it was cool to be able to find fish and look around and be able to see, like again, I'm fishing for largemouth, but I'm always keeping my eyes open and was able to actually find some smallmouth in the mix. So I'm happy with that and successful fall day on Lake Lilanoa. So one thing that I absolutely love about fishing in the Northeast is you have the chance to catch a five pound smallmouth and a five pound largemouth in the same day. You go down South, you're either gonna catch smallmouth or largemouth if you go up north, you're only gonna catch smallmouth in a lot of places, but here in the Northeast, it's like a mix of both. You can catch a five pound largemouth, you can catch a five pound smallmouth on the same day, on the same spot. I absolutely love that. Versatile, and what else can you ask for with this beautiful foliage at the same time? Mm -hmm.